After over a month since our live stream, today we're talking about the Schenker Vision 15, also known as the Intel Nuke M15. This is a 15-inch laptop. You can see it's black. There are silver versions of this. Schenker is currently selling this in silver. It's the only variant you can get from them, or um, in the U.S. you can get this from Simply Nuke called the Tiger S Nook Book. Um, you can only get it in silver right now. There might be one available in this finish around sometime in April of this year. So stay tuned for that if you're looking for this in black. Otherwise, you know, same thing in silver. So this was sent to me by um, XMG slash Schenker. Uh, XMG is their gaming brand. And this is more of a kind of like office productivity kind of Ultrabook type machine. It's running in 1165 G7. We've got 16 gigs of RAM equipped in this machine, 500 gig SSD, and an AX201 Wi-Fi card. On the outside, obviously, it's this nice black finish. This anodized black aluminum all throughout the machine. Got a little black vent on the bottom. This thing kind of reminds me of like a razor blade in a number of ways. Mainly just how black and minimalistic the thing looks, but also just in the feel of it. It's very sturdy, feels pretty high quality. Uh, I mean, we've got this little light bar up in the front here, too. Uh, there's also microphones across the lid here that you can kind of see on screen, the little black dots. Those are for the Alexa function. That's also what this light bar is for. Um, when the laptop is locked or on, you can be like, uh, you know, hey Alexa, and then just use that like a virtual assistant. You have to have the app on at all times for that to work. It doesn't just work randomly. So <laughs> if you're not a fan of that, you can always just opt not to use that feature. We'll run through the ports real quick. Got a Thunderbolt port on the left, as well as HDMI and USB. And then we have the 3.5 millimeter jack with USB-C and Thunderbolt 3. So you get USB type A and type C on both sides, and both sides have a Thunderbolt 3 capable port. So if you're using an eGPU or some sort of dock, you don't have to worry about it being on the wrong side. You'll never run into that problem. Both ports are also charging capable, so you can charge with either side of the laptop. Along the bottom of the laptop, again, we've got that vent here, and we have all of these Torx screws. I believe we have seven of them. They're T6 screws, and if you buy this from Schenker, they will come with the screwdriver that works for this, so you don't have to worry about getting one. This is a press sample. It's not a production model. Thanks again for sending this to me. I really appreciate it. There will be some issues I've run into here that likely won't occur on the production model, so... You know, when I do my normal spiel about an issue, just keep that in mind that this is not something I just went and bought from the company. This is something they sent to me, and it's just got the problems it has because it's an early run. So it might have <laughs> issues they need to work out before they go into production on these. Uh, they are starting to ship out. Um, this month, the silver models are shipping out. I'll have a link in the description to both places you can get these, either in the US or the EU. Also, the mics along the top, they work really well for like video calls and stuff. They pick up your voice really well if you're near the laptop. Uh, I would not use this <laughs> as like your only Alexa device if that was kind of the plan because, you know, the mics, they do a good job of picking up your voice. Uh, but that's if you're in front of the computer, if you're kind of away. They're not like you know, <laughs> gonna blow you away. One thing here, this has Windows Hello IR face recognition. So like when you open it up, it'll scan your face and log you in. And this thing wakes up from sleep incredibly fast. Like I had to make sure that it wasn't, you know, still on when I had it closed just because of how quick it is. And I'll just show you that now. Like I'll move in front of the camera and then just open the laptop. Yeah, so it, it, it's pretty effortless to get signed into the laptop, get it running, just open it up, make sure your face is in front of the camera, scans you, and then you're right into everything. So, no complaints there. Uh, it starts pretty quickly as well. It's very quiet. I've never been able to really register the fans over 40 decibels, so it's going to be kind of hard to really pick up on the fans, especially if you're playing any audio, you know, playing any games, watching movies, you're not going to be able to hear the fans unless you're really trying to. And also, regarding the fans, the cooling system in this laptop is probably better than you think it is. I'll talk more about that later, but just using the laptop, it never really gets hot on the palm wrist here. 
as you might think it would um, because laptops that have small vents in the bottom tend not to breathe very well. This one does, thankfully. The only place it gets really warm is this grill along the top here, but that's the only place it really gets hot. The speakers, they're under the laptop at these ends. I kind of wish they were, you know, upward facing and they get pretty loud. It's about 75 decibels, but they can get up to 80 um, peaking. It just depends on where you're, what you're listening to and that kind of thing. Only real issue I've run into in terms of like basic utility usability stuff. I mean, I'll be talking about some screen stuff later, but the Wi-Fi signal strength can get kind of weak. Yeah, that's the band for the Wi-Fi. So that's basically your antenna. It's the same on the other side, and that just handles all of your Wi-Fi signal. So if that's obstructed at all or just is not really facing the correct way for your Wi-Fi, it's just not going to work <laughs> too terribly well um, for your Wi-Fi signal strength, unfortunately. Luckily on this system, both the Wi-Fi card and storage are upgradable. Everything else is soldered, unfortunately. I do wish that this had upgradable RAM. There's just not really the space for it on the board, unfortunately. Would have liked to see the machine. You know, maybe it's a little thicker, but it has the RAM slots on it or something like that. Would have just really preferred to see that upgradable as it kind of makes the machine, you know, have a limited lifespan in a way, especially if any of the RAM modules fail on the board or anything like that. More of a personal preference there than a critique of the laptop itself. If you're fine with that, then it's not a big issue. Now, regarding the touchpad, I might have talked about this earlier. It's pretty big. It's very roomy. It accelerates pretty well, and I never really have an issue getting anywhere with the touchpad. Um, the only thing is, there's this little spot here. Okay, so you can see it's on now. I'll double tap it. Off. Double tap it again. So you can see that's just a good way to turn the touchpad off if you ever needed to do that. They're planning on disabling this function actually in firmware. And also the way it tracks your finger, it, it's a little like wavy. If I move pretty much in a straight line with my finger, I can see it kind of going up and down for some reason. I'm not sure why it does that, um, but that's just something I noticed. And yeah, the keyboard is pretty comfortable. It runs into an accuracy issue. It's similar to the problem I had with the Asus G14, the way it happens. Um, basically, you can push the key down and it will not react as a keystroke. Um, it's not due to like key rollover or anything. It's just due to the way the key switch is designed. You can press the keys down and it feels like a keystroke when it doesn't actually type a letter. I've run into that a lot when I've been typing on this laptop and it is pretty frustrating just in general <laughs> to deal with it and it probably could be fixed just by changing some material choice in the keyboard but I thought it was worth noting at least that this laptop you know does have a slightly more typo prone keyboard than most others do. The layout's good and pretty comfortable. Um, you can see there's some little uh, cut out little indicator spots on the keyboard above certain function keys. Not all of those light up. And I was told that they're either going to be removed or they'll work in the production models. So it shouldn't behave weird on your machine. One thing I ran into on this particular unit is that the keyboard on this side of the keyboard, um, the mounting basically broke on it. And you can see the keyboard deck is very stable. No keys move. And then I'll press this key and you can see the surrounding keys move. I'll show on screen some photos I took um, while I was investigating this. And basically the palm rest here, the metal of it like stripped out <laughs> and the screw just kind of ripped through it. And now there's nothing holding the keyboard in on this corner. That's why it's moving so much. I've been told that it's probably just, you know, a pre-production manufacturing issue and it'll probably be resolved. But, you know, just something to keep in mind if you're looking in. If you're looking around seeing what people are saying about the laptop, uh, just look for that kind of thing and see if anyone's talking about it, of course. The keyboard also has some kind of strange rollover behavior uh, where if you're holding down keys as well as shift or control at the like right way, if you hold it down the right way, um, the machine will just kind of ignore your key input. I'm not entirely sure why that is. I think it's just the way they did the rollover on the keyboard. It's just like that. Um, so gaming's not going to be a really big strong suit for this keyboard in particular and it might be a little frustrating as a result you might have to change your binds and there's the touch screen now the touch screen when I got this laptop was pretty nice to use uh, but as you can see it's not working right now uh, I'm talking with uh, the rep I got this from to sort out why that's happening uh, and hopefully we can sort that out but just something I 
ran into. I'm sure I'll be able to fix it. If I can't, I'll follow up with you guys somewhere. Just check the comments. I'm sure I'll be like, yep, I got it fixed now. Uh, but at the moment, I can't show you it, unfortunately. If you live outside of the U.S. and you're trying to get a laptop that's only available within the U.S., or you're even within the U.S. and just want to get something that you know will work when you receive it. I've started a company recently called Atlas Technology LLC. We handle quality control, checking of all laptops that we buy and ship out to you on your behalf. So you don't have to worry about any of the returns, warranty, hassle, anything like that, especially if you're trying to import this internationally. For instance, we'd be able to order something like a Lenovo Legion 5, Asus Zephyrus M15, or pre-order any of the 30 series laptops for you on your behalf. Just pay us, we order it, check over it, do all the quality controlled measures, make sure you're okay with our results, and then we send it out to you. Anything we can test and verify that it's working and in the condition you would like, we will order it for you and ship it out to you. Be sure to check us out at atlaspc.org. Again, this is my company, so anything you buy from there supports basically the channel and myself if you enjoy the content, so be sure to check it out. There's also a Discord there you can join. Um, to learn more about it and just chat with me about it if you have any questions. So yeah, see you guys there. Anyway, back to the video. Now let's talk about the screen. The screen is very nice. It's very vivid. Uh, I didn't really run into any issues with like how video looked or anything. You know, the power settings can probably be turned down on it. I turned a lot of them down. I'm still getting good battery life on the laptop. It's very vibrant, gets very bright, pretty much up to 500 nits depending on what your settings are. So, you know, <laughs> it's going to be a good viewing experience in that way. But the response times on this panel are very, very bad. Uh, this exact panel is a BOE 08F5. A notebook check did the response time testing here on the same exact panel model. And, um, you know, response times vary just by a little margin of error between units. <clears throat> and they got about 60 milliseconds of gray to gray. And just to kind of put that to perspective, optimistically, you'd be getting around 18 FPS of like clean footage and everything after that, it seems blurry. So even things like movies or TV shows that are typically 24 FPS will seem blurry and games will be especially blurry. Like I was playing Minecraft and Minecraft gets very, very blurry on this screen. If you're doing something like m strip mining, it just becomes a garbled mess in front of you. I honestly would say that that's not acceptable in my eyes. I would really want to see a better screen than that. I know that the low power screen on my T480 is maybe 30 milliseconds, which is, you know, infinitely better. You could at least see most content clearly. Um, but this one, the screen is just, to be frank, it kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> And that's about as nicely as I can honestly put it. <clears throat> For the next generation of this, I'd really appreciate seeing just a more snappy panel because the response time of the screen ultimately determines how quick the laptop feels. And if it feels like everything's smeary and sluggish, the laptop does not feel quick which is not what you want for something Intel designed. It's supposed to feel like a snappy system. And for the most part, it does. The screen lets it down, though. Now that we're on the topic of performance, let's talk about CPU performance. This has no dedicated GPU. It only has XE graphics. And the XE graphics on the 1165 are wonderful. They chew through most low-end or just low-intensity games. You can run things like Grand Theft Auto V on this pretty competently if you bring the settings down and have reasonable expectations and in general it'll basically impress you some games won't work some will just keep the drivers up to date and you should be fine when it comes to cpu strictly though this thing is crazy the cooling like i mentioned is very good the computer stays cool at all times it doesn't get loud but the power level this thing runs at while achieving those temperatures is <laughs> It, it's frankly crazy and that is while running at like 40 watts and for perspective a lot of these chips are intended to be ran at 27 watts so that's you know short of double power level that's close to the power level you see in gaming laptops where they're running at 45 watts so the power you see out of the cpu in this thing it's close to like gaming quad core performance if this had a six core processor in it that would be even crazier but quad-core at this level of power just gives you 
so so much single core performance that any game title you use is probably going to be okay. And if you're going to be plugging in an eGPU, you won't have any complaints, I'm sure. Quad core in 2021 is still viable despite what someone else might say. It works fine if you're not playing like Battlefield 1 on your ultra low voltage ultrabook. You're not going to do that. <laughs> so, again, reasonable expectations. Really impressive for my expectations in this machine. Again, like I said, 40 decibels. The keyboard deck stays cool. And it can do this when it's on battery. It will run at 40 watts when it's on battery. That is crazy because we talked about the Flex 5 a while ago with the 4500U. This thing would be killer with the Ryzen processor in it, by the way. Um, but with that, it was running at 35 watts. And that thing, you know, it got a little loud, like 45, 50 decibels up top when it was running max. I mean, this thing stays at or below 40 most of the time. And it doesn't even get hot. Like, the bottom gets warm. It, it's like, it's crazy. I mean, the board's inverted, so all the heat pipes are right here, and it's pulling air in through this vent. Because that bottom vent is kind of useless. <laughs> to be um, honest, it's really only there to keep it alive if you close the lid and run it. Um, but it, yeah, I, I've been baffled since I got this thing and how well it just handles itself cooling wise. It is impressive. You know, construction's great on the laptop. No real complaints about like creakiness except for some reason in the lid, there's like a weird clicking. And also like I, I can lift the keyboard deck up when I move the lid, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, that could probably be remedied by just putting a bigger battery in the bottom, which Guess what? Battery runtime. We're talking about batteries. So, again, like I said, I've had this for a month. I've been practically daily driving it for the last at least two or three weeks. I've been kind of splitting my time between the uh, Core 14 and this one. And battery life is really good. I've been getting around 10 hours of battery life pretty easily just if I'm doing, you know, normal computer tasks like browsing YouTube or email or word processing, school type stuff. Breeze lasts forever on that. Uh, I only have really ran into a point where I needed to grab a charger at the end of the day or if I've been using it like <laughs> since 8 a.m. and, you know, it's running out of battery. That's It's very rare that you need to charge the thing. So, in general, very good user experience. Screen and keyboard need some improvements for sure. Um, just on the next model or something. I mean, the keyboard is usable. Screen is usable. It's just would like a better keyboard, would like a better screen. Not like I want more sRGB or I want more brightness. I just want it to be more responsive and usable. I want the keyboard to be more reliable and responsive. All I want. Otherwise, this machine is honestly one of the best laptops I've used in recent times. Um, I'd be willing to say that it probably would, you know, fare better in my testing than like a Razer would, even though those are praised as like the user experience, like God, because <laughs> I I care a little bit about the little the little things with these laptops, and this one's designed in a way that I can really appreciate, at least where they're coming from. It's got its little got caveats. I mean, also. My unit, for some reason, when you're sitting on, like, a table, it will kind of rock around. But, I mean, that seems to be more of an issue with the pre-production. It probably would be wise for them to change the bottom feet here. Where, instead of it being these flat feet along the bottom, it's like it drops in the middle. So that you get more even... So the feet are a bit more even on, on stable or uneven surfaces. Other than that, I haven't really run into any issues that aren't just a matter of this being a pre-production sample. So, I would have to say that I would probably recommend buying this machine if you can get it for a good price. Uh, some of the pricing I'm seeing is putting it around like $1,100, $1,200. And for the performance you get out of it, and just the battery life and the whole package in general, I would probably say it's worth it. In silver, it's a little fuglier than I'd like, but if you like how the MacBooks look with their black keyboard on silver, you probably will like it fine. 
And yeah, I mean, I, I can't see a good reason not to buy this other than the screen and the keyboard issue. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to check out these products in the description, get subscribed, like the video. I'm probably going to be editing this a little different than I usually do with some kind of B-roll type footage. Let me know what you think of that, and I might do it again in the future. Be sure to check out the Vision 15 at uh, Best Wear. I'll have the link again from the description. Thanks again, Schenker, for sending me this laptop. Really appreciate it. I have uh, coverage coming of the Core 14 soon, so stay tuned for that, as well as the Lenovo Yoga 6. And that's all coming in a series of videos coming up probably this month. It's been a little bit of a break for me, but we're back into it. So again, join channel if you want. Patreon's there as well. Um, thanks to all the Patreons and channel members that are still hanging on after this week, ab um, after this month-long absence. I <clears throat> had some stuff I needed to take care of this last month, and it's been a little crazy, but we're back now. So yeah, uh, again, get subscribed. See you guys later, and I hope this video was helpful. Mm -hmm.